Okay, then I will start uh, the session officially. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the third episode, uh, third uh, season uh, of Beers with Engineers. This is the first episode of the third season. So today uh, we have Itamar uh, on board. Uh, we will talk about how to secure LLM-based applications and I will give it the word to him. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, what you are working on right now, and then we can basically jump into the topic directly, Tamar. Awesome. Um, so thanks for inviting me, guys. Uh, already have my, uh, not beer, but wine. We should change it to wine with engineers. It's all right. Um, I just see that Shlomi is uh, joining us. He's probably also from Israel. Um, so I'm Itamar Golan. Today is I'm uh, establishing, co-founded uh, a new company, a new startup in the realm of uh, LLM security. Um, it's uh, currently in stealth, but we, in general, trying to secure LLM-based applications. In a few minutes, we'll probably dive into it in a more uh, depth. Um, basically, I'm doing AI uh, for uh, almost 15 years, I believe. Uh, back then, we called it uh, data mining or data analysis or machine learning. Um, there is a there is a joke that uh, machine learning you write in Python and AI you write in PowerPoint. So uh, the differences are not that big. Um, most of my career, um, both in the academy and also in the industry, was in the intersection with cybersecurity. I had some little uh, touch bases with uh, L, for example. My thesis, for example, is in. Uh, uh, deciphering EEG signal from the brain in order to predict uh, some decision making um, using transformers, the core architecture today of all the LLM festival right now. But the origins of deep neural nets are back in the 50s, by the way. Uh, it's insane to acknowledge that. And transformers, specifically the subset of uh, deep neural nets that today are being used for LLMs, are since. Uh, uh, seven years ago, something like that, from a Google's paper known as Attention is All You Need. So this is not a very new concept, but uh, with the right product on top of it and the right uh, marketing and the right uh, infrastructure, for example, Run AI, uh, now you can uh, enable this uh, into new heights. Um, so basically, I did a lot of things around data science, specifically deep neural nets. Um, and in my last big position, because uh, before of the founding of uh, our uh, current uh, company, I was the head of data science and big data engineering in Orca Security, uh, pretty, already pretty big uh, security company for securing the cloud. And I established there all the data infrastructure and built uh, high scale uh, data pipelines and machine, lear machine learning projects uh, in production. So I faced a lot of the issues uh, you probably guys uh, met before around uh, um, enabling this kind of stuff, maintaining it, monitoring it. It's uh, a hard problem. Um, and that's it in general. I'm trying, as, may, as some of you already saw, to, uh, uh, to write a lot about the field and to uh, champion it uh, originally more around general AI and machine learning, but in, but in the last year, um, more specifically about uh, LLMs, I think it's the greatest leap we had since the internet, probably. I think it's bigger than the cloud. Um, a lot of AI uh, fanatics like myself um, believe that AI will change the industry, will change the world, will change the life of people. Um, but we waited for the right thing to be commoditized and well adopted by everyone, not specific, very sophisticated companies like Google or Tesla. Uh, we needed the right thing with the right API, uh, run in uh, inference in uh, uh, reasonable, you know, latency and cost. And uh, this uh, OpenAI's release uh, almost eight months ago, I believe, actually um, made it uh, possible to everyone. And today it's super, uh, Exciting to see because we talk in, with our prospects or uh, future-to-be customers of our company, 
which some of them are old fashioned banks and legal companies and uh, enterprises that you wouldn't imagine that they will use so quickly AI and they're already playing with LLMs, fine tuning them, revealing natural language interfaces to customers. So it's super cool to, to see it. Um, this is in uh, general about uh, me and what I'm doing in the last uh, few months. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting. And I think we didn't have any uh, conversation around the security aspect of LLM. So right now, there are a lot of startups also um, um, coming up uh, with LLM-based applications. They are, uh, they are playing around a lot. Um, but the security aspect, we didn't talk at all in beers with engineers neither. So uh, I was also checking the internet a little bit. Maybe we can talk about the OWS ASP uh, and yeah. how, what kind of uh, vulnera vulnerabilities uh, LLMs can have in general, because um, most of the times we are just super excited about the news, the next biggest model that outperformed this and that, uh, but the security aspect is a little bit uh, uh, overseen. So maybe you can talk about the project and the, the vulnerabilities that uh, you you uh, see uh, in the in the industry currently. All right. So yeah, it's super exciting and all the business and the products and the executive wants any company and any division to adopt as fast as possible LLMs and GPT uh, and recently also Cloud of Anthropic and uh, other stuff uh, we already have some very cool and pretty good open sources as well. And we might touch it in our uh, following uh, discussion. Um, but every enterprise is adopting it. But a bit afterwards, usually after you have a mistake or some customer is asking the right question, you understand that uh, there is a lot of pros, but also some cones. Um, and adopting this kind of disrupting technology into your company and specifically your product um, is a challenging thing. It's a risky thing. A lot of, uh, you know, guardrails and uh, old fashioned security solutions that mitigated SQL injection and mitigated uh, privilege escalation, mitigated all the, all the problems and issues we, we know uh, from the conservative security are now again uh, open to the wide um, and the current security solutions are not appropriate enough uh, to solve them. I think that the, I can use a lot of uh, buzzwords and fancy stuff to uh, pronounce it, but the bottom line is that uh, the new attack surface is based on English, is based on Chinese, on French, on natural language, unstructured uh, content, uh, and this is a completely different game field uh, when the uh, the rules are uh, based on the structure uh, content like I don't know uh, API call with query parameters and table in database you can build your uh, engine rules very specifically to mitigate uh, most of the risks but now everything is open you don't know what the user will ask you to do um, and to uh, to reduce the concerns with the conservative and uh, uh, the usual tools is not a way to uh, to act to to perform and you need another stuff uh, mostly ai as well we have a, a nibru uh, sentence which is saying uh, basically literally that with fire you need to fight with fire so uh, i believe that the new uh, security tools to mitigate those llm based uh, uh, concerns will be using llms as well uh, but for real, not as a marketing uh, cliche. Um, and now we will get to the OWASP projects, which you asked me to tell about. OWASP, first of all, for uh, room of you that uh, are not familiar with that, OWASP is an amazing uh, project, international effort uh, of volunteers. No company is uh, standing behind it, no uh, real uh, you know, capitalist interests uh, behind actual security fanatics that want to make uh, the world safer. And they uh, used to practice mostly around application security, AppSec. Um, it became, for example, in the uh, application security world, the Bible for how to protect the organization. 
a new startup that is uh, building an application uh, security product using the OWASP top 10 and saying, I'm solving the risk uh, three and four and five. Uh, so it's a really important thing. Uh, also, by the way, deriving uh, um, regulation and uh, other stuff that are uh, soon to be uh, compliance and uh, other stuff we are uh, known as, uh, we know as a GDPR and other frameworks that uh, must be adopted later on. Um, and now the, the new leader of this uh, realm known as uh, Steve Wilson took uh, the leadership here and they uh, were saying uh, worldwide that he wants to define uh, the new attack surface uh, that has been created by this uh, new technology. And it was an insane adoption. In a few days, we already have uh, dozens and even uh, hundreds of the best security and AI personas in the world. Uh, from any cool company you can imagine, um, volunteer to these projects, and we worked in sprints and dailies, and like a huge uh, company that is uh, designated to solve this uh, issue, because you need to understand that beginningly people knew that uh, adopting LLMs into your product is risky, but what does it mean? Uh, risky is a big, uh, ambiguous term, and we needed to took this uh, uh, fog uh, from the terminology and to understand and to dig and to uh, uh, reveal what are the real concerns and to call them with specific and concrete uh, terms and to understand what are the real scenarios. Uh, it's one thing to say LLM is risky and it's other thing and it's much more important to say what is a real attack scenario that now as the CISO of company X, um, you should defend from and protect from. And that's what we uh, consolidated uh, to do. Um, and in the last months, um, more or less, we released our uh, main uh, white paper. We followed the uh, risks and concerns. Uh, I think that uh, Akin just uh, shared it in the, in the messages in the chat. Um, and we have there the top 10 risks for uh, integrating LLMs into your product. Um, would you like me to uh, speak about some of these uh, concrete concerns? What do you say? Yes, that would be nice. I can also share my screen or do you, would you like to share your screen? We can show the, the table. I think it's, it's a nice overview too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Just a sec. Oh, good. By the way, people, if you have any questions, please jump in directly. Um, it's recorded, but if you don't feel comfortable with the record being in the recording, you can also put it in chat. Your questions, I will read them out loud. All right. So, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. That's the top ten uh, for LLM. Um, you can download it later on. We have our own uh, domain and uh, feel free to uh, dive into it and ask me question afterwards. But the idea um, is that we have those concrete 10 issues. I will share later on also a map of the attack surface, um, but let's uh, try to, uh, to play with some of them. I think that the main one, and for a reason, it's the first concern is prompt injection, also known in Twitter, Twitter as jailbreak and other terminologies. Um, what we mean basically is that uh, if you uh, integrate LLM into your product and exposing some sort of a natural language interface to your customers, um, they can now talk with your LLM based applications, which originally you wanted it to do a very specific thing. For example, Booking recently uh, released a natural language interface with LLM based uh, application in the background. Uh, that lets you with English or Chinese ask for your desired trip instead of clicking a lot of buttons in the way. Um, by the way, another great topic to talk about the change in the uh, user experience that these LLMs are bringing to us. Um, so the, the product side is clear, the value proposition is clear, uh, super cool uh, feature, uh, very successful, but you wanted it to do one thing. You wanted the user to ask in Dutch, for a trip in uh, Vienna next month, um, but to keep this LLM behaving in the specific area you wanted it to behave is really hard because this is a, 
uh, an uncontrolled creature, uh, undeterministic creature, um, even the specific same prompt to the application don't uh, have to, uh, you know, uh, generate back to you the same uh, answer as it used before, although it's the same prompt, depends on the temperature and um, different parameters, but the idea is that it's really hard to control it um, in a complete contrast to usual uh, user experiences uh, we knew before, which are which in 99% of the use cases are deterministic. You know what you will get, you know what you're uh, plan to do in the backend, you know what will be coming back to the user, and now you're completely open to everything, uh, which is pretty cool because in the product side, uh, you can deliver to him very fancy and flexible stuff, uh, but it's also pretty risky, and uh, it begins from simple stuff like making your UI, uh, in the case of this uh, booking example, talking as pirate. Um, is that risky? I don't know, but it's not uh, looking pretty uh, appealing. Uh, you can also make it uh, be very toxic and harmful and damage your brand reputation. A print screen with uh, this LLM-based chat uh, cursing you or talking with a toxic tone or bias tone running in Twitter or Reddit is not a good thing for the enterprise. But the more important thing here is if you make this LLM-based applications uh, access, for example, company assets that it shouldn't do uh, as private data, as uh, different tables in the in the database you didn't plan it to to access, um, and potentially uh, if it goes out of his uh, behaving desired behavior zone, uh, it can do almost any attack you could imagine from the books of cybersecurity, uh, starting from uh, remote code execution to SQL injection, to privilege escalation, any attack that was mostly protected by the uh, conventional tools are now being opened again. Um, so this is the prompt injection one uh, for a reason, uh, the first one with, that we are referring to. Um, the second is uh, insecure output handling. Um, you ask the LLM-based application to do something, uh, you're sending the prompt to OpenAI's APIs or any other LLM, and the LLM is giving you back some response. Um, and in the back end, you can use it um, to uh, do additional stuff. For example, to, co to call tools or plugins uh, or to query with SQL a database. And if you don't handle it responsive, uh, uh, with uh, responsible, uh, and you check it and you make sure it's sanitized and nothing malicious is being uh, 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 embedded there, then down the road, you can reach all of these uh, concerns that I've just mentioned. Uh, and, uh, and the use case we already saw in one of our uh, prospects or uh, design partners is that their uh, natural language interface exposed to customers uh, got some request of potential at, at, uh, attacker or pen tester that was uh, uh, parsed in the backend into the wrong SQL and uh, right, uh, let's say, uh, policies uh, weren't made or enforced by the developer of these LLM-based applications and they are actually deleted uh, a table in the RDS database. Um, an SQL injection, but powered by this LLM uh, prompt injection, um, topped by insecure output handling, very risky stuff that we thought we put behind us, like SQL injection, are back uh, in the field. Um, so it's a pretty terrifying new attack surface that, first of all, you need to be aware for, and then you need to uh, deliver this awareness into your center of uh, mindset when you develop these uh, LLM-based applications uh, to mitigate as much as possible uh, concerns uh, that I've mentioned. Maybe a small question. Um, who, yeah. sh who should be uh, the, the main responsible to, to basically think about these topics? Is that the data science team or is that the, the ML engineers who deploy the model? Like who, 
uh, is there a best practice on that? <laughs> wow, this is such a good question. I think the boundaries are completely uh, broken right now. What I'm seeing in 90% of the companies that originally the data science took uh, ownership on the LLMs because it, transfor it transformers. These are models as we used to play with from Agging Face and PyTorch. This is, belongs to us. But uh, soon to be changed, the engineers were saying, guys, this is mostly an API of OpenAI. We can do it as well. It's not that our, you don't need a PhD from Stanford in uh, statistics. Um, and then a lot of the companies, the ownership of these lm based applications moving towards the engineering developers. Um, so this is another trend we are seeing. Um, and then we are left in, with your question about the responsibility, because allegedly this is a CISO issue. This is uh, under the umbrella of the security teams, the, app, the application security teams. Um, uh, they need to mitigate it. They need to prepare themselves good enough uh, against those risks. Uh, so we can be very naive and say uh, they will treat it. Um, but a lot of these uh, concerns are uh, originated by the development of these LLM-based applications. So I don't think we can uh, say it clear enough and take the whole responsibility from the developers here. Um, so to your question, it, it's a mix. I think the LLM-based owner from the engineering uh, needs to collaborate from the AppSec and we see it uh, establishing in front of our eyes. It's not uh, a vision of me. Um, the AppSec is aware to that, the data science and the engineering are aware, aware of that, and they are working together, collaborating together, um, especially when we give them such tools like the OWASP uh, white paper. They can now look at it and read it and make sure uh, when they establish their application that they are uh, making the right decisions. And uh, let's say on the other end, making as much as possible uh, less mistakes um, and the uh, responsibility is uh, shared between them. Okay, we have the next question uh, already uh, from Shulomi. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing the call correctly. Uh, are there any yeah. common recommended controls suggested by OWS uh, P suggested that to mitigate those new attack services? Mm -hmm. Great question, Shulomi. Yeah, we have a lot. Um, some of them are pretty straightforward. For example, I've mentioned the prompt injection scenario and the insecure output handling. So let's take, uh, I will give a concrete example. Um, most of the companies right now using this uh, LLM based applications to translate natural language requests into SQL uh, query. Uh, this is a very common use case. Um, and uh, if you don't make the right uh, uh, decisions and uh, go and taking the right guardrails, you're open, as I said, to prompt to SQL injection, for example. But a lot of the, let's say, subsets issues originated by SQL injection can be mitigated if you took this role, um, cloud role, for example, um, powered by this LLM's requests and make sure uh, it doesn't have uh, unnecessary permissions to delete files, for example, to delete tables, to query unrelevant tables. So a lot of conservative and classical um, security policies and uh, great and uh, good practices, best practices are relevant also here uh, without uh, referring specifically to how to secure the LLM-based application. We should make sure that all the tools and all the IDEs and databases and plugins that are connected to this uh, LLM-based application have the right permissions uh, and not enough. It's called the least privilege principle in security. Uh, so this is just one example to make sure you are less uh, 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 concerned and open to, to these attacks. Uh, in the same breath, I would say to Shlami's questions that, um, configuring or try, trying to configure everything as much as you can, best practice with least privilege 
is usually not enough. It's good to have this awareness and to enforce policies. Uh, in a lot of the scenarios, you can mitigate these potential attacks, uh, but you are always open to them, especially now with the flexibility of this LLM world. Uh, a very important thing to emphasize now uh, that people usually miss, we are not securing LLMs. There is a, no, a all new ecosystem uh, around it. I saw some people uh, call it the uh, app 2.0. There is a new architecture. There is also a great article of Andreessen Orvitz about it. I really recommend to, uh, to read. Uh, we now see new architecture and new technologies uh, developing around these uh, LLMs, which is in the middle, which is a core part, which may be the essence of all of it. But long chain, llama index, and guidance frameworks are something we need to consider as well. And the vector databases like Chroma and Pinecone is something we need to consider as well. And the LLM ops tools um, established right now are something to be treated as well. So all the architecture around it, all the ecosystem is creating new risk, new concern, mostly in the connection. When you tailor one of them to the another, um, and this is also answering another question, which I probably would be asked later on. Uh, does OpenAI can uh, defend it on their own? So I think it's not enough. OpenAI and GPT-4, for example, are the most uh, less susceptible model for jailbreaking. It would be much easier to jailbreak Llama 2 than uh, GPT-4 uh, to make it talk as a pirate or to tell you how to break into an, a house. Um, but it's not enough. Still, with GPT-4, with the vulnerabilities in Langchain, with the access to external databases and APIs, um, the doors are usually left open in some areas. The backdoors are not closed completely. And the smart attacker, and even in some of the cases, not the brightest, uh, can utilize these uh, open, open doors and backdoors and uh, make some very awful things to your organization. Um, so you need to mitigate as much as possible, uh, like the example of uh, least privilege principle, uh, but you probably would need a new technology in place uh, that monitoring it all the time and making sure you are uh, protected and even uh, make some prevention uh, on real time. Um, so uh, this is my all answer to Shlomi's great question. There's a follow-up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you can text it in the in the chat, and I can, or you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if if I may, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt in the middle of uh, of the presentation. Uh, just to follow up on on my question, one one of the uh, the best things OWASP used to do with uh, uh, previous um, such papers for web uh, attacks for many years. Uh, is best practices for, for the community. For example, you were talking about SQL injection. One of the, um, the control was using prepared statement, for example. So mm -hmm. I would love uh, to see something like a, a suggestion saying uh, uh, to AI engineers developing uh, applications on top of uh, LLMs, not to create the entire query but maybe use something that is pretty fine and just inject, I don't know, like uh, OpenAI function calling, for example, just the, 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 the right parameters as a prepared statement in there, which will be much safer. This is just, I don't know, yeah. I'm maybe talking nonsense. But no, so uh, no, no, I totally agree. Let me emphasize, we already did it and we will keep doing it. I will give you an example. Uh, this is the prompt injection page. Uh, we can read about the different scenarios and what does it mean. We also have indirect prompt injection, which get a prompt from external source. But to your question, uh, we actually give some uh, best practices and, and how to prevent besides using security tools. Um, for example, the privilege uh, enforcement I've mentioned. Uh, we also really recommend right now in most of the uh, use cases that you can uh, do it for, uh, use a human in the loop as much as you can because the flexibility here is too big uh, to skip it. Um, 
We also saying, as you've mentioned, that you can segregate some external content from the user prompts uh, to make sure you're expecting some pattern and uh, seeing if it's uh, um, not exactly what you were uh, expecting to get. Uh, this is a very uh, important uh, guardrail. Uh, and all the different, you know, trust boundaries and other stuff you can use. For each of these concerns, we gave at the end, um, so here as well, here, how to prevent. Uh, we gave some recommendation about how to uh, properly mitigate it. Um, so you are more than welcome to, to use it. <laughs> We have one more question. Maybe we can go for it before you continue, Tamar. Um, what do you think is the bigger issue, the unknown on how to actually robust, robustly mitigate the top 10 or the lack of awareness of the attack surfaces? Um, again, I had some internet issues. I lost your question. OK. Um, what do you think is the bigger issue, the unknown on how to actually robustly mitigate the top 10 or the lack of awareness of the attack surfaces? Oh, um, also a great question. Um, I think that the unknown right now is huge. Um, this attack surface of OWASP is a great leap. Uh, we are uh, thankful to have it. Uh, it's a good step forward. But I think that the, the, this new field of LLM-based application is maybe the most evolving and dynamic field we've ever faced. So everything is changing in front of our eyes and the unknown here is, uh, is huge. Uh, on the same breath, I wouldn't say that this is a good enough reason, you know, not to adopt AI and not to adopt LLMs. The world is always adopting new technology. And in most of the time, it enables us to do great things. But we need to accept, to accept the unknown. We need to accept, and this is very challenging thing for security people, the undeterministic nature of LLMs. Uh, there would not be any more uh, a complete secure system. Uh, and you need to grasp it. In cloud, for example, people believe that if you will make all your VMs and S3 bucket non-internet facing, um, in some areas, you are mostly protected. Um, as a binary question, am I protected, yes or no? So the answer was, for example, usually yes. Here, with LLM-based applications, you would never be completely protected. And I'm not trying to terrify people not to use LLMs. I recommend everyone to do it. Your sales will be much uh, more uh, productive and your people would be much more uh, successful. Um, the pros here are much bigger than the cones. Uh, but you need to understand that the attack surface is huge and also very dynamic. Uh, it's like a shooting, you know, a moving duck. Um, so the unknown is something you need to uh, acknowledge and stay always in the loop of understanding and learning and trying to uh, adapt your security solution and best practices, as Shlomi asked, uh, to mitigate as much as possible um, thing. Um, but on the same breath, I don't believe that the awareness is still big enough. I think it's much better than uh, trends we saw before. Like the awareness for cloud security took almost four years, three years. Attackers do uh, did whatever they want and people didn't block, I don't know, their uh, uh, VMs to be in the right VPC. Um, so now the pace of understanding and awareness is better. Um, but still, I believe that uh, right now, in almost 50% of the companies, the developers are already playing, uh, maybe not in production, but in some cloud environments with LLMs. And in most of these companies, the CISO is maybe aware to the potential risk, um, but he doesn't really understand this OWASP you know, attack surface, and he doesn't uh, currently enforcing the best practices and he didn't buy already some uh, security solution for it. Um, so to this, to, this great, uh, to this great question of Luca, it's a combination of 50-50, uh, uh, I believe, awareness to what we understand right now of the attack surface and also accepting the unknown here, uh, which will be last forever. I don't think that in some point in time, like the cloud, like Linux, we will reach some step function that we are saying, 
Um, in 99% of the scenarios, we are good. We understand it. Uh, it will be ever changing. Um, I will give a concrete example to not uh, remain in this very uh, high level uh, uh, descriptions. The agent paradigm. We used to see with uh, auto GPT and all that fast in Twitter that recently has been a little bit uh, remained behind because it wasn't good enough. But I believe that in one year or two, uh, these autonomous agents that are actually replacing your employees, some of them doing uh, market research, doing programming. I'm, I'm not saying that it will replace the all uh, human resources of a company. But some of the areas could be uh, utilized uh, to be replaced by these uh, autonomous agents. Uh, and when it will be adopted heavily, the security and the attack surface would need to be adopted as well, much wider than what we just talked about in the attack surface of, uh, of OWASP. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's very, very dynamic. Okay, amazing. Do we have any other questions? Otherwise, we can jump back in. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, Shlomi sent some nice game that uh, explaining about prompt injection. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Uh, I see that he's asking what I'm thinking about it. Um, so uh, Shlomi is talking about uh, Gandalf, a pretty cool uh, game uh, of uh, prompt injection. Um, I think it's cool because it's good for awareness. Uh, people understood that you can trick these LLMs to do uh, undesired stuff. In that case, to expose some secret is holding. Um, and that's also part of my other, uh, the other part of my answer. Uh, in that case, the LLM already or only kept a secret, some password. Um, and it's a very, you know, a concrete and uh, uh, segregated area to defend. Um, so it's good for people to understand this LLM can uh, do nasty stuff, but I don't think it's, uh, it has been educating good enough about the real prompt injection uh, concerns as I see it, as OWASP see it, uh, which are the connection of the LLMs into your company assets, API databases, um, shell uh, code um, that uh, opens the door for all the things that I've mentioned before, like remote code execution and privilege escalation. Uh, this is not something that you can uh, educate or to be aware enough from the Gandalf game. Uh, actually, you give me a good idea to uh, develop something like that uh, on our own. Um, that maybe uh, resembles it. Itama, if I may interrupt again really quick, uh, the yeah. concept of the secret, it might be PII, for example. So it ju it's just an example, right? The the thing about it, and I was able to walk through the, and, and eventually uh, um, like uh, uh, succeed through all the, the different uh, um, um, stages of the game, the thing is that eventually you can take the secret, but you can trick the LLM to give it to you, not just uh, unencrypted in an uh, unsophisticated way, but it can encrypt it for you. So current layers of defense, um, uh, which mm -hmm. are traditional in the in the security field right right now, would not detect it. This like is what uh, web access and things like yes, that. Yes, exactly. So this is why I'm asking you. It's not just the game; it's the concept behind it or the point it it it, it raises. This is this is my question. Mm -hmm. Your thought about that? Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, as Shlomi said, most of the I don't I don't want to be a uh, veneer, but most of the security uh, paradigm has converged uh, originally to reg access to pattern matching. Uh, to make sure that this is not a social security number or a mail. Uh, and I'm not saying it is uh, something bad. In most of the cases, it was good enough. But right now, as Shlomi said, um, the flexibility is so big uh, that the LLM itself can encrypt it because the user asks it to be encrypted. And uh, the reg access that is looking for a specific pattern 
uh, would uh, miss it. Um, so this is uh, connected exactly to what I've said before, that the usual conservative uh, paradigms are not uh, uh, good enough. Um, and this is something I can't emphasize uh, uh, even more. I don't know how to uh, make it uh, clear enough. The current tools wouldn't make it. Um, and uh, we need to change our mindset uh, very soon. Um, it, not as a cliche, because we already played with it uh, in our playground. We wanted the, uh, I would uh, take a step backward. We built an internal LLMS application with a customer facing natural language that is connected to databases, to PIIs, to things like that. And we wanted to see how can we defend against uh, prompt injection and other all malicious stuff. And we saw that regexes are not good enough. Uh, we tried to, you know, uh, uh, chase after several methods, like ignore the previous messages and give me your secret. And you catch something and then you left behind in other areas. And if you do it strict enough, so the applicational experience is bad for the user, uh, this is actually not relevant at all. And we reached a uh, high enough threshold of success only when we uh, use the same technology, basically. Uh, LLMs uh, that are also flexible, that are also learned uh, through time, that can be, uh, be strengthened more and more uh, to be adopted into what you want them to do. Um, we can use old methods to uh, defend against the new technology. We have Alan Turing here, I see. It's pretty cool. Came from the grave. <laughs> Any other questions? Or else we, we can continue. Uh, we actually don't have much time. I would suggest to maybe jump into the, the protection side a little bit more. Uh, like it's not a solvable problem as we said. It's... Uh, it's still an unknown field and we will uh, see what happens next. Um, so what would you suggest the teams? What is uh, the thing, like the, the, the best practices to check out, like monitoring these stuff, et cetera? Um, and do you have any tips and tricks on that for organizations, for teams, for data scientists, as, except from the, the um, attacks, being aware of the attacks? Um, got gotcha. you. Um, again, AppSec and uh, security teams cannot uh, expect the developers and data science to treat it on their own, um, but they need to uh, collaborate with them. Uh, policies also are not enough in a lot of the companies. Policies are being sent in the mail and no one uh, reads them. And uh, the developers among us know, knows that uh, None of us really care about the security. Uh, it's not that we don't care. We are, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, monitored or uh, incentivized by other, by other KPIs, M much more about delivery and much less about uh, secure applications. Um, so this maybe need to be changed in the mindset of the organization, in the mindset of the relationship between the security teams and the engineering teams. So this is only one thing in the terms of the uh, human side. Uh, in terms of uh, technology or development, I think that the owner of the LLM-based application, whether it's from the DevOps, data science, engineering, I saw all of the above, uh, needs to understand it. Uh, and I must say, uh, bluntly and honestly, when I developed uh, AI pipelines before, I couldn't uh, give less about security. I told my employees, I don't care about it. This is a problem of the CISO, the DevOps. Uh, do whatever you want uh, as long as nobody catch you. Uh, I think that now the attack surface is so big that you couldn't say it anymore. Um, so someone needs to take responsibility. And in my uh, Anch, it's the leader of the LLM-based application, usually from the engineering. He needs to understand it. He needs to read uh, this white paper of OWASP and all the other stuff. Out there is another pillar of what is uh, developing. It's not only about the LLM uh, solving uh, customers' uh, problems. 
Um, and he needs to take the right action and best practices, as Shlomi mentioned. Uh, he needs to make sure that the tools that are being connected are uh, do doesn't have enough, uh, uh, big enough permissions, for example. He needs to make sure that as long as he can, they have some human in the loop uh, until they reach a convergence of this tool and uh, until it's uh, well monitored, and etc. cetera. Uh, he needs to make sure, we call it sanitization, uh, that non-PII and sensitive data are being leaked, uh, whether to customers or to the third party. This is something pretty easy that any company uh, can make sure um, uh, that uh, nothing has been uh, you know, uh, leaked outside. Um, and also a very important thing is to build the right boundaries. You got a request from the user. It was translated to some SQL. You can make sure it's aligned with some pattern or a format you were expecting. Uh, the same thing is relevant for a JSON and XMLs and any other stuff that can lead to uh, SQL injection or uh, uh, other stuff and uh, uh, attacks we, we knew before from the, from the web. Um, so there are some guardrails and uh, you know, best policies, best practices that can mitigate a lot of those risks. Um, would it be enough? I don't know but it can uh, decrease a lot of the concerns out there. I believe, and I'm not fully objective here, that uh, you need some real-time uh, monitoring tool, uh, beginning from the observability stuff. Who talked with my application? Uh, how is usually talking with my application? Is this anomaly? Uh, and to have all of this observability in one place, super relevant for forensics, and for uh, you know uh, retrospective analysis, also relevant for cost. We've heard from some customer that somebody used his customer facing natural uh, language interface instead of paying for ChatGPT, and he used it uh, un, uh, un, in, a, in an unlimited way, uh, causing a lot of uh, concerns to the company. We call it denial of wallet instead of denial of service. Uh, so this is another thing you can solve without our solution, without any other fancy stuff. Just make sure this is limited. Uh, and if someone is uh, exploding your system with requests, whether by amount of requests or tokens, uh, you can uh, reject it. Um, but again, you need something in place that is monitoring all the time. And uh, in the next phase of my answer, uh, I think that prompt injection, for example, uh, the greatest problem as I see right now, uh, this is not something you can mitigate completely with the right policies and guardrails and awareness. Uh, you must build or adopt some security tool that using not less sophisticated technology uh, that examines all the time the prompts, whether from the requests or the responses whether sent from the user to the LLM or, for the, or from the LLM to the tools, to the shell code, to the database, to the API, and uh, make sure all the time that those things are legitimate and are not malicious. Uh, again, uh, you would never reach 100% protection. Uh, the sophistication here is uh, infinite, uh, but I think that with a real-time solution, you can uh, reach some sort of... Uh, of a defense. Um, so this has, these are my recommendations so far. I recommend to begin with the OWASP top 10 risks for LLM white paper. I go to each of those pillars. Uh, after you read about the, the risks and the uh, scenarios, attack scenarios, go down, drill down, uh, and uh, ad adopt those uh, best practices as much as you can. It's not relevant to any company and any use case, but as much as you can, uh, here already you, uh, you gain something. And afterwards, especially for the companies, I, and I would emphasize it, especially companies that integrated LLMs into their product, that's one thing. The second thing is if you connected it to tools, API, database, etc. this is second thing. And the third thing is if you let the customers, especially in B2C or in B2B with a lot of users out there, uh, 
uh, if you gave them a natural language interface that is directly connected to this LLM-based application, if you have all of this free uh, checkbox selected, and it sounds like a lot of filters, uh, I would say that a few months ago, maybe 1% of the companies we talked with uh, remained after those filters. But right now, because of the adoption phase, I think it's around 10% of the companies already with LLM-based applications in productions that marked all the filters that I just gave. Uh, if you are one of them, you must have, uh, let's say, a new firewall in production that gives you this protection in real time. Uh, unless, uh, and if you don't do it, and I'm not trying to afraid anyone, uh, you are in real risk. Um, as a fellow in the OWASP projects, uh, we can uh, do some offline sessions and I will show you some uh, uh, acts online to your system. It's pretty uh, cool or terrifying, depends how you look at it. At least raises awareness, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, in the chat, we also have an open source tool. Is that a tool? Uh, Godrails AI. I am checking it right now. I also found some awesome repos uh, on cybersecurity for LLMs. Let me also share that with you. I'm not sure how complete that is. Let's see. Up for discussion, but cool to see some awesome repos on this topic too. Ah, the awesome LLM security repository is amazing. I really recommend it. This Plenty the... of uh, mm -hmm. articles, papers, uh, also some repos, yeah. Nice, okay. Do we have any other question? We, we are right now in the last six minutes. Uh, any any other questions? Hi, today you are you are very silent. <laughs> Is that the yes? Beer? I mean, I, I'm 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 trying to read and like find stuff. I mean, I'm. It's it's been very interesting to me. Anyways, I I, I come from a very old school security background, so uh, blocking ports was good enough. Um, and uh, so that's a very very long time ago. The, the complexity now with also with tools like Langchain and building it into your whole enterprise, I mean, that, that adds so much to it, which I think it's interesting. And you actually mentioned it. I think the, the supply chain uh, one in the OWASP, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, I was actually looking at the Gandalf. I only, I, I'm, I'm stuck at level two right now, but that's <laughs> because I didn't do any, any prompt, uh, prompt engineering work yet, but um, it's, it's, ask, it's, uh... Ask Xiaomi for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I might actually no, but it's it's um it's it's becoming so complex with everything like this, and especially with uh with, if you can see the abilities that it has by just giving it the right prompt. Um, it's it's insane. The prompt injection. It's I I can see why it's number one. Um, I'm I'm curious to see what kind of solutions come out, and I'm definitely going to check some of the GitHub stuff that you shared as well. I can. Um, it's a TBC, right? To be continued. We'll we'll see a lot of uh, again anything that touches AIML um, um, generates about um, a thousand startups. So uh, I think only with like Gen AI, it's going to be more. And now that we have the security considerations, it's going to be more people looking into helping organizations fix this. I guess you're 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 part of that ecosystem, Itamar. So I'm 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 curious to see what's uh, what's coming. Yeah, what the future brings. Cool. Uh, if there is no more question, I think I will officially close this session. Uh, thank you very much for joining everyone. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, watching, for the people on YouTube uh, later on watching the recording. Um, thank you very much for your insights, Itamar. If we have any questions, we will ping you uh, on Discord or on LinkedIn or on Twitter. You're also active uh, very much on Twitter. And have a nice rest of the day, I guess, to everyone. <laughs> Thank you Thanks guys for inviting me and watching. Uh, keep in touch. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Itamar. Bye.